Hi there, my name is Christian Bates and I've been um, an osteopath and a naturopath for 20 years um, and over that time I've been helping um, lots and lots of babies um, with colic and reflux and excessive crying, basic babies that are um, upset, crying, not sleeping, more than a normal baby should. Yes, you know, babies are going to cry because they're um, uh, they want their mummy, they want their daddy, they got a dirty nappy, they're hungry. But we're talking about babies that are excessively crying, um, and most mums think this is something to do with um, colic. Um, but there's lots of reasons behind the colic, and that's why I wrote my book here on the screen, Calm and Colic, How to Help with 10 Causes of Colic. So as I said, I've been doing this for 20 years. I uh, work from the Paramount Clinic in Haywards Heath and um, currently I would see about 40 or 50 babies a week, um, helping them get better. So it all started, I started treating babies and um, I was giving handouts to the mums, uh, showing them the research behind um, how I was helping babies with the probiotics and things like this. And basically got just got so big I could barely even staple it together and I thought okay let's finish this off get this uh, into a book and on this slide you see I've got antibiotics at the bottom and you know I was just I noticed it was so easy to notice that so many babies that were coming in that had tummy issues had had antibiotics at some point or the mum had and it, we all knew everyone knew that antibiotics upset your tummy if you're an adult um, but no one was saying that it would do the same for a baby and it was just easy for me to see that. So I was seeing this kind of having this experience in my clinic seeing the same causes behind these babies being upset. So I then went into the science, I started doing lots of um, scientific research and I basically I found answers to everything that I thought and it's that is still what I do now. If I start seeing patterns with babies I get in there, get to the books, get on the internet, I research it, and I find basically the answers um, to back up what I'm seeing in the clinic. So what we want to do with your baby, and that's what this slideshow is about, getting a bit more in depth for you, and that is finding the causes of your baby's discomfort, not just the symptom. The symptom is colic, or the symptom is wind, but why have they got that? You can't just fix wind if you don't know the cause. So um, Calm and Colic, the 10 causes of colic, my book's uh, title. So these are the colic symptoms. Um, excessive crying, going red, you know, in pain, they're tense, these babies are clenching their fists, their knees up, or they're arching, typical witching hour, and this is the classic colic symptom, which I've never used. No mum's ever come in and said, my baby's crying three hours, three days per week for three weeks. Um, they come in upset and say, my baby is in pain and crying, and I don't know why. Can you help? So a few stats uh, on colic that I found. It affects up to 20% of colic uh, of babies. Um, and unfortunately it is. It's a burden to the families. The mum and dad aren't sleeping. Um, they're upset, they don't know what's wrong with their baby. Um, and yeah, the mums are getting pretty stressed out with it, poor mums. Um, and I just love helping the babies and getting the babies happy. And then of course, mummy and daddy get happy too. So when I looked on the website, funny enough, this isn't on the website now, but um, when I searched on the NHS website a few years ago, the causes of colic are unknown. That's not true. They certainly are known. Uh, it's poorly understood, it's common, it affects babies and they're crying, but they appear to be healthy and well fed. That's the definition. There is no cure for colic. Um, this is an interesting one because I would say actually there is, but in natural health, we never say that um, we cure things. We uh, do something called remove obstacles to cure. So we remove things, we take the problems away and then that baby just gets better. We're all programmed to get better, especially babies. They're amazing at getting better. So we figure out the cause, we take that problem away, and boom, baby is better. And it's really lovely, lovely thing to see. So 
this is what you've probably been told. All babies cry. So don't worry, all babies cry. You know, um, you know, get get on with it, leave your baby to cry, and you're thinking this, you know, my baby's not just crying, they're screaming and they're in pain, and I don't know what to do. Wait in 12 weeks and they get better, absolute classic. Your baby will grow out of it. I see loads and loads of babies who have um, been crying for longer than 12 weeks. So my aim is to help you to understand why your baby is colicky. And when we find that why, that's the cause. And then we fix that and you'll have a happy baby that isn't so windy, isn't crying all the time and will be sleeping too. So here's a few of the causes. Antibiotic use, like I said, I saw that early, early on. The, the Everything about baby comes from the birth, actually. So the pattern that they're in, their position, if they're knees up little frogs or they're arching back, I call them the meerkat babies. Um, all of these things contribute to how your baby is now. If a baby's only a few weeks old, what's happened in their life, really, the biggest thing is this birth. Maternal separation changes things. Um, allergens through the breast milk, the stress through the breast milk, all the stress in the parents just being around. So you can have formula problems, which has the cow's milk protein, uh, the lactose and lactase. Um, your baby can be excessively hungry, or or are they? Or are they just excessively sucky and they're not hungry? Mothers with digestive issues, um, and there's more. I'm going to go through a few of these on the slideshow. All the answers are in um, my book, Calm and Colic, and that's um, www.calmandcolic.com. Um, I promise you, you'll learn so much from this book, and it will help your baby into the future too. Okay, so let's have a look at some of the top reasons um, that your baby is crying. So, huge one, biggest one, uh, gut flora imbalance, and that is the... Um, bacteria that's in our gut, um, trillions of different bacteria, and we have goodies and baddies, and there's loads of research on this. And, we, and a colicky baby, same as often in an adult, has too much bad or not enough goodies, or they have different strains and different mixes to babies that aren't colicky. There is tons of research on this. Um, this I'm going to whiz through some research just to show you this is all uh, scientific research. So differences in the gut bacteria were found among colicky babies to, compared to non-colicky babies. Different patterns of, this is lactobacilli, different patterns of the good bacteria were found among colicky babies compared to other babies. Um, again, exactly here, these are kind of bad bacteria. There was more of those in colicky infants. Um, and again, the same here. The average count of total coliforms, these are different bacteria. Again, they were higher in colicky infants than the controls, which were infants without colic. Okay, so all, sci all um, scientific, backed by science, they've got more bad gut flora or less good, or there's a different variety. Okay, another big one for colicky babies, a traumatic delivery. Um, forceps von twos being stuck, um, amazing, also included, like maybe a really, really fast delivery when that baby has come out, um, you know, with the jump and the shock and they're retaining that. That changes the gut flora imbalance or gut flora balance to imbalance, and that's what I've just told you, it actually plays a role in colic. So again, moderate disturbances during pregnancy was sufficient to alter the gut bacteria in the baby. Um, and this is exactly the same. The stress level changes the gut flora. Here's another one. Um, stress during the neonatal period changes how their tummy works. Um, and another one. It, the stress increases the baddies, the bad gut bacteria. And um, here's, oh, this one's, uh, sorry, this is maternal separation. Yeah. If your baby gets taken away, it changes the gut bacteria. It's just, um, it's absolutely amazing how uh, these imbalances occur and all of those lead to colic. So already you're seeing there are causes, definite causes, and you can um, improve the baby's gut bacteria um, and they don't have to have colic. And if they don't have colic, 
they're happier and they're sleeping. So we've got traumatic delivery, some stressful delivery, changes gut bacteria and colic. Okay, this one's huge, like I said, antibiotic use. Okay, this is the biggest thing. Antibiotics do pass to your baby. If you had them at delivery, if you had a C-section, you had them. You may not have been told you were going to have them, but you would have got them because you were having an incision. So you were having an operation. Um, and also if you took them whilst you were breastfeeding, if you got them just in delivery, it's enough to pass to the baby and trigger colic. Okay, I love this one. I love this bit of research I found. So um, they checked out some babies who had had um, antibiotics and the conclusion was we um, uh, usually regard it as harmless in this respect in adults, but they weren't in the babies. So they were actually surprised that the antibiotics affected the baby. During antibiotic treatment, the bacteria were isolated from only 10% of the infants. So they only found the good bacteria in 10% of the babies after antibiotic treatment. This is the kind of stuff that you should know about as a, um, as a parent. Um, because you can fix this with probiotics. Special baby probiotics will fix this. Um, so another one. Just some, just some more science. Have a read there. Just showing that antibiotics change the baby's gut bacteria. And there's another one. So antibiotics, stress, change gut flora. They give your baby colic. Okay, delivery type. How was your baby delivered? The biggie on this is C-section. So these are some more science uh, that I found showing that the C-section does the same. So the baby picks up the bacteria, the good bacteria from her mum through the birth canal. Now, the baby will also pick up bacteria whilst inside you uh, this is new research that's coming out, so when they're in you, they will pick it up, and when you're breastfeeding, they will pick it up, and if they're touching your skin, they will pick it up. So it depends if you're breastfeeding, you know, you've got to get the skin to skin, but a C-section does the same thing. Decreases the good bacteria, and then they get the imbalance, and they get colic. So C-section is a cause of your baby crying. Um, so have a read of this one. The C-section babies picked up the bacteria from the skin, not the mother's birth canal. It's absolutely amazing and fascinating. And I've got research that shows that babies pick up the bacteria from the hospital ward they're on. They just pick it up from everywhere. So you want to give them the good stuff. And when they get the good stuff, they have good, happy tummies. So C-section, antibiotic stress, changes the gut flora imbalance, which causes colic. So I, I just completely found this one out myself. I just saw it time and time again, that if the mum has um, some digestive issues herself, like IBS or colitis, actually, this is how I saw it. I had about three mums in a row who all had colitis and they had the most colicky baby I've ever seen and they were breastfeeding. So if, you, if we start linking things together, if you've got tummy issues, that kind of means that you, have a diff you don't have so good gut bacteria. And if you haven't got good gut bacteria, you're not passing that on so well to your baby. So what I do is I have the mums take probiotics. Ideally, you take them in the last trimester, then you've got a load of good stuff in you. You're totally topped up, and then you pass that on to your baby while they're in you. You pass that on to your baby when they're coming out of you. You pass that baby to your baby when you're breastfeeding. You know, it gets on your skin. You're kissing them. You're just passing them all this um, really great bacteria. So... Um, big tip, uh, last trimester, take a probiotic. You might need that tip for your next baby. Now, I've just read some um, research very recently that showed that the bacteria in your gut was more associated with your baby's bacteria in their gut than was the bacteria in your birth canal. Um, so where they keep saying, you know, the baby's got to come out of the birth canal and all that kind of stuff, uh, it's, it was your gut bacteria that has a bigger association. So if you've had a C-section, but your gut bacteria is good, then um, that's great, you're gonna be passing that on to your baby. I really liked that because it meant that you 
could improve your gut bacteria and you can do that before you've even had the baby. Okay, so parental stress, uh, like we've looked at the stress of the delivery, actually your stress um, passes on to your baby. You know, it's kind of, I wish it didn't, um, kind of because lots of mums are stressed with their colic and reflux is so stressy for you. Um, but it does, and I'm sure you've noticed that your baby cries if you're upset and things, and um, the science just backs it all up. If you've got stress in your blood or stress in your saliva, like if you're stressed, that will pass through your breast milk. Okay, and I found this really, this kind of, I thought it was quite funny, uh, a bit of research, that they found that babies had increased fear behaviour. So, I mean, what mum's going to read this anyway, but fear behaviour, let's take that as a crying, colicky baby. And I've got the mad professor there, because I just thought these professors are writing this stuff down, but no one's translating it into, <coughs> excuse me, into something useful for you, and that's what I hope I'm doing, giving you some useful information. And here's uh, my favourite uh, WWF wrestlers, tag teaming. So if, if you're stressed, you know, if you've got some friends, if you've got family, then just pass your crying baby over. You go and take 10 minutes, have a little walk, do some deep breathing, some meditation if you can, something that's relaxing. Calm down, bring the stress levels down, and then you can go back to your baby. And your baby's probably calmed down once you've given them to someone else anyway because they love that calming feeling. So now we're starting to really build up this picture of the causes behind colic. And I've mentioned them already. Probiotics, this is what I use with babies all the time. Probiotics are friendly gut bacteria that you can take. And I have, um, or I use specialist um, friendly gut bacteria for babies. <coughs> And there is loads of research on this. I would use these on my own children. I have used them with hundreds and hundreds of babies and it is all scientifically backed up. And that's why I don't mind using them at all. One, they're amazing. And two, they got a load of science behind them. Um, so you can have, oh, so this one actually shows that it worked better than Infocol. Um, here we go, let's keep going through. There's plenty. I mean, there's loads more than this. Every week stuff comes out. And this one here, if you just if you see here, I wrote it modulates the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. It shows that the probiotics are calming. They're actually modulating the stress response in the babies, which is totally amazing. <coughs> okay, so now I've chucked on a load more of the other causes on that. Um, and there's more, there's probably more than this. So you can see it all really adding up to why your baby's colicky. You find out the ones and then you can fix them. I use the probiotics, I look at the mother's diet, I also use the uh, actual treatment that I do as well. And what's so important for me, and I, and I do this with every mum that comes in as a patient with their baby, is that I look after the mum. And the main way we look after the mum is to get them eating well because mums uh, you don't eat so good because you're looking after your baby and what I just try and do is to get the mums to eat it's like you can even eat how you used to eat but you just eat and um, I have to say that m many 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 of the nutrients that you will need to recover yourself and your baby will need through your breast milk come from meat actually if you're vegetarian or vegan you have to really uh, step up your protein sources but unfortunately those protein sources are real colic triggers in your baby so if you're breastfeeding you can have a really windy baby from the nuts pe uh, nuts beans and pulses and things like this um uh, but meat has a lot of the really good stuff so uh having a baby uh, you know probably the biggest event uh in a man or woman's life you know like the toll uh, it takes on your on your body. You you're growing a baby. You've grown a placenta. You've given birth to the baby. You're looking after the baby. You're tired. It is totally amazing what you have done. And to think that you can do that whilst not eating is crazy, <laughs> or not eating very well. You should be eating the best you've ever eaten, and you are not 
given that advice. You are told to eat whatever you want or don't eat. Don't worry. Just look after your baby. I promise you, you eat well. If you feel better, if you're less stressed, your baby will be better too. Um, like I just said, your health, your energy, your moods, your breast milk will, will contain the nutrients you're eating and then your baby will be happier. And I've written books on this. I've written, I took diet diaries from every mum that came in and I analysed them all and I came up with eight tips. And this is one of the books that you can buy in the package. But here, here, are, here are the eight tips. More protein. Uh, there was more vitamin. The mums are really deficient in vitamin B. They needed more fish oils. Uh, you needed better quality and 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 quantity. Amazingly, because the mums weren't eating. Um, you were eating. Mums were eating loads of sugar, so we needed to cut that down and replace that in with protein. You needed to balance your blood sugar. Um, eat more fruit and veg and cheat if you can, which is. Um, get some snacks in, you know, make things as easy as possible. And we and I've written all of this. You've got snack, I've given you um, lists of snacks and things to make it easy. Blood sugar is when you have a, a sweet food and your blood sugar spikes and then it crashes and you are passing the stress hormones to cope with that through um, your breast milk. So will colic rates get worse? Uh, will your babies get unhappier? Y yes, because antibiotics are used all the time. C-section rates are up. Um, mums are, there's way more food, just bad foods around for us to eat. Um, I think the breastfeeding rates might have crept up slightly, but they're still only for like a month or so. You know, we're all stressed now and we're passing that through to the babies. Mums are working up closer to the due date, so they're more stressed and then the delivery is getting all stressed. So there's so much we can do here to help um, babies and I have basically written all of that down there is so much that I can't talk about the whole thing um, you know on my website on carmencolic.com there is videos there are blogs there's much as I can but and I but I have written all of this down in all of these books the Carmen Colic is a download for only $3.99 um, I just wanted it to be available as available to mums as possible um, you know that's such good value for money there's so much information on there to help your baby now and into the future and I've written all these other books to look after yourself uh, all the eating mistakes but how to improve them how to um, eat to balance your blood sugar so you're happier you're you don't have the mood swings you're stabilizing all your hormones I wrote a weight loss one because mums were trying to lose weight loss by restricting calories and you don't want to do that. You want to eat better. You want your weight loss to come from hormone stability, not from calorie restriction. You cannot calorie restrict <coughs> when you're tired and you know, and maybe fed up or breastfeeding. You, you must not do that. We'll get you eating better and the weight loss will happen naturally. Um, pop over to the uh, website, have a look around there. Um, I'd love it if you would buy it the Carmen Colic or the full set because there's so much help in there. You will not regret it. Full money back guarantee. Um, you just email me if you thought they weren't as good as you hoped. They definitely will be. There's so much stuff in there that you will have not heard before or people have told you the exact opposite. And when I explain it, you will totally get it and realize that you have not been given the best advice. Okay, this is the end. So any questions, you can um, ask me on the Common Colic Facebook page. You can email me, christian at Um All the links are on uh, the webpage, pop over there. I hope you liked this presentation. This is a slightly longer one. There is loads more um, on the website, but please pop over there. Thank you very much.